Welcome to Yachting World's Heavy Weather Seamanship Series, produced in association with Pantaneous Yacht Insurance. This month, Skip Novak's going to take us on a tour of his two specially designed cutters, Pelagic and Pelagic Australis. They've been designed specially for high latitude adventure cruising. Hello, I'm Skip Novak, and you're on board my 54 foot sailing expedition vessel Pelagic, a boat with a history. Uh, built in 1987 in Southampton, it was very much a DIY project, and the uh, philosophy of the boat was really to sail to remote destinations around the world, principally high latitude destinations, the Arctic and the Antarctic. And the whole ethos of the boat is robustness, simplicity, and a go anywhere philosophy. And it's a steel boat, got a lifting keel and lifting rudder in order to get into shallow water situations, out of the ice be able to beach the boat if necessary in all these remote places we go to. And because it's lifting keel, it's quite a special interior. Most of the most boats have interiors in the maximum beam of the boat where the day area is, the main saloon, and, and, and these type of things in the galley. Whereas our boat, because of the lifting keel box here, the main area is pushed back in the stern. So here you have a couple pilot berths either side. You've got a salon table. You've got a library. And there you've got the galley en suite, two burner gas hob, and an oven and all the other accoutrements in a, in a galley. You've got here the, the life of the boat. This is the heating system. This is a great thing. This is a Danish fishing boat stove called a Reflex. Runs 24-7. Doesn't use any electricity. It's fed by a gravity uh, day, uh, day tank. And got a drying locker behind for our foul weather gear and a drying area for our boots. Sort of like a fireplace in a house. I like that, you know, that, that natural heat source. And if you walk forward, we're going to have a little tour of the boat here. We've got our chart table here. We've got Bertie navigating today on the dock in Ushuaia. And very simple, we still are on paper on Pelagic. Even though we do have electronics as well, we still have to have paper charts. Most of the areas we go to are a lot of unsounded areas and very primitive chart plotting. We've got a toilet, shower area. Everything operated by hand, of course, because, you know, everything has to be reliable. Once we leave port, we have to be totally self-sufficient, be able to repair everything ourselves. Here you've got a cabin, ice dry to the keel case, double bunk down below, single berth up top. Storage areas here, pockets under the bunks, boot lockers under the bunks. And this is my favorite part of the boat. This is the workshop area and storage, big forepeak. It starts pretty much by the mast here, that's the, the mast up above here. Big area you can walk into, tool area here, Big vise, two outboards we got, one's on the deck. We've got two inflatable dinghies go in there. We've got all our vegetables and fruit in these plastic boxes here. Spare ropes, running rigging, anchor gear, diving equipment, shore equipment, fender boards. Place you can walk into. There's nothing worse than a little tiny four-peak or a lazarette where you're upside down trying to uncover something to get out something else. Here you can actually walk in. It's all accessible. Going down the... Uh, Port side of the boat is symmetric to the starboard side because of the keel case. You've got two more bunks here forward. Then you've got the double bunk here, single above. It's also articulated up and down like a pipe, pipe berth. And then you've got more food storage here and these clever little barrels, a lot of the dry stores back in the galley. And back to your main saloon, which is really where it all happens in the evening. You, you tie to the shore, anchor down some lines ashore, and here we have a few drinks and a big meal. And this is how this is our style of cruising. This is exp expedition cruising. Now this is our uh, bolt-on goodie that we added later. This is a fixed uh, dodger. We call it a pilot house. And in here we've got all our safety equipment, accessible life jackets, flares. EPIRB in here, we've got knives and things in here, flashlights, all, all at the ready. And it's a nice place to relax in heavy weather because you can sort of stretch out here, stick your legs down in the companion way and get out of the weather. There's nothing worse than being stuck on deck. Here we can still observe what's going on from inside this shelter here, it's great. Little well, sliding hatch here. And we've got a uh, very simple cockpit arrangement. There's no push button winches. Everything is manual here. It's really great. Keeps us nice and fit. And under here, we've got a diving compressor, 
there that we use actually use as a sort of a, a seat. Behind that, the gas bottle locker. And behind that, the life raft in a float-free container. And there's our chimney for the heater here, Charlie Noble. And of course here is our, down here, our lifting keel slot and the uh, locking mechanism for the keel. And we've got four lines, four spools of line here, 120 meters each to tie to the shore. We can put two bow lines out and two stern lines out. And this is, our, this is how we operate in places like Tierra del Fuego and the Antarctic Peninsula, tying to shore is much safer. Welcome aboard Pelagic Australis. This is uh, the evolution of the Pelagic, uh, incorporating all the lessons we learned over the first uh, 12, 13 years down south. It's a 74-foot lifting keel, lifting rudder, aluminium this time, not steel, and obviously bigger volume, a bit more spacious, a bit more comfort, a bit more internet friendly. This is the pilot house area. This is really the heart of the boat. This is where we basically live in the pilot house while we're sailing around go outside to, to adjust the sails, come back in here, hang out. It's got a 360 degree view. Nav station over there. Engine controls over there. Safety equipment all visible. Life jackets. All your kit here at the ready. Safety equipment behind the lockers, med day medical kit, etc. Flares, nothing hidden away. And this is the roll bar here to keep everybody tacked down and rolling sea so they don't fly off the uh, settee. Going to take you downstairs the, to the uh, port side of the boat because it's a lifting keel, of course, again, symmetrical side to side for the day area aft. And she's a 12 passenger boat with three crew, MCA category zero, all bells and whistles, built in South Africa in 2003. Big double cabin back here. We've got a ensuite toilet to that cabin with a shower arrangement in there. Another double cabin here, upper and lower. Going through a watertight door, we've got five watertight bulkheads on this vessel. Another double cabin here. A lot of storage space, pockets, lockers, boot lockers under the bunks. And this is my favorite part of the boat, the workshop, of course. We got a tools, vice, all stowed away. Spare parts under the floor, spare parts under there. Keel winch arrangement. It's got an electric tow truck winch to lift a 12-ton keel. Going through another watertight bulkhead here, this is the uh, unheated section of the boat where we keep all the fresh vegetables and fruit and big racks here. Uh, two engines, two inflatable outboards. Hidden back there is a spare propeller. We've got diving equipment and we're rigged now to go to Antarctica for a mountaineering exercise. So this is all fooled with crampons, ice axes, all the sharps. Every climber gets a, gets a barrel, okay? And now we're going to now go down the starboard side, which is basically symmetrical. Every cabin has a heater, has a radiator, ventilation obviously, escape hatches. Another head here, and then we're going to go through the skipper's cabin here, which is the same level as the aft saloon. Nice and spacious. And this is the coming in now to the ensuite communication center here. We've got uh, fleet broadband, iridium space for people to work on their laptops, all the charging equipment, big Siemens electrical panel. And through in here is the engine room in there. We got a 250 horse Cummins in the proper engine room space. And main saloon, you can see 12 people around the table, extensive library. And this is now the heart of the boat, the heating system. It's the reflex, same, with, same as we have on a little boat, but bigger with a back boiler to heat all the radiators forward and the hot water tank here, that's the calorifier. That's a great place to hang out. And the galley, very simple galley. Two burner custom stove to fit two customized 12 liter pressure cookers. Electric oven underneath, we run off the gin set, which is back in the lazarette. And everything else stowed away properly here. You can make some good meals, good meals on this galley here. And out the hatch to the pilot house. We'll do a tour of the deck. Okay, going out the watertight door into the cockpit. This is quite a unique arrangement here. It's a big sliding composite hatch there that goes all the way back. So you can sit under here without putting on foul weather gear and be basically outside 
but not have to put gear on and, and get soaked. So this is a really, really nice area. You get four people in here. Watertight door, obviously. 12, two 12 man life rafts with a float free lid. Okay, Steer, main steering station. And the cockpit I really love. This is also unique. It's a cockpit where the winches are all ergonomically placed at this level. You're not sort of bending over on a combing and you're leaning against, you know, with your hip against a really solid surface, not trying to capsize over a, a shorter plinth. And a big rollers bring all the sheet leads up to these winches, get a clear lead. Running backstays come in here. So you basically are walking around all the running rigging, no ducking and diving here. And it's a completely flat deck from stem to stern. Back here is a nice feature. You got about two bomb bay doors, give access to the stern scoop. Ladder and a swim ladder that f falls over the side. And also gives access to the big spools of rope we have, the shorelines. We got two spools underneath here, two times 150 meter polypropylene lines that go ashore. Okay. And then walking forward, man overboard gear, obviously. And that's our famous chimney. And also, this is a great, uh, really safe solution for a boat this size. Rather than standing up here on a, on a very high plinth where you're looking out over the lifelines, you're standing down here at the working deck level. So there's some sense of protection. Lines can't go over the side, etc. We've got one pedestal winch here, which is a utility winch. We use it for, on the first hoist of the main to top the main up. And we jam it off and then use the mast winch for the main halyard. All the reefing clue lines here go to this winch. If we blow the electric windlass, we can take chain hooks and bring the chain in using this windlass as well or use it for a spare anchor road. And also shorelines, spring lines dive through a tunnel in the combing and go to this winch as well. So it's a great sort of utility winch, all manual. All sailing control systems on the boat are manual. All winches, furlers, everything is by hand. Keep it simple. And a nice clean foredeck, four meter inflatable zodiacs go here. And of course now we're rigged to go across the Drake tomorrow, so everything's down below. Nice clean deck. We've got three furling headsails up front. We've got the storm staysail rigged and ready to go. Very small blade. We've got a 90% high clued Yankee in the middle. And then we've got the 130% uh, high clued uh, uh, Yankee for very light air. So we're really rigged for any condition. Light air is right down to storm conditions with a fourth reef in the main. Bob's your uncle.